So here's Rilke. He's uh, with this poem. He's looking at the way the swans uh, walk at the side of the river. If you've ever seen the awkwardness of a swan as it's moving, it looks like evolution's stepchild. You know, it looks like it just takes a, a step with its left, it's going over, now it catches itself. Step with its right, it's going to go, now it catches itself. It's this awkwardness. And then suddenly it touches the water in the river, and it becomes that image of grace you know, and belonging, which is so um, uh, prevalent in all our great myths and stories around the world, the image of the swan. This is Rilke's description. He doesn't, he doesn't ignore the awkwardness. In fact, the first line is the best description of Monday morning we have in the literature. He says, this clumsy living, this clumsy living that moves lumbering as if in ropes through what is not done. This clumsy living that moves lumbering as if in ropes through what is not done reminds us of the awkward way the swan walks. And to die, and to die, which is the letting go of the ground we stand on and cling to every day. It's like the swan, when he nervously lets himself down into the water, which receives him gaily, and which flows under and after him, wave after wave, while the swan, unmoving and marvelously calm, is pleased to be carried, each moment more fully grown, more like a king, farther and farther on. This clumsy living that moves lumbering as if in ropes through what is not done reminds us of the awkward way the swan walks. And to die, and to die, which is the letting go of the ground we stand on and cling to every day, is like the swan, it's like the swan, when he nervously lets himself down into the water, which receives him gaily, and which flows under and after him, wave after wave, while the swan, while the swan, unmoving and marvelously calm, is pleased to be carried, each moment more fully grown, more like a king, farther and farther on. So really says, you know, the swan doesn't affect the transformation by whipping itself on the back and saying, when the going gets tough, the tough gets going, you know. It doesn't get out its organizer, and it doesn't, you know, try to remember the trauma it suffered as a young signet, you know. It, uh, <clears throat> all the swan does is move towards the water. It moves towards the element where it belongs. And it's the contact with that elemental sense of belonging that gives the swan its grace. And to die, which is a letting go of the ground we stand on and cling to every day, is like the swan. I remember I re recited this poem for years, and then suddenly I had letting down into the poem, just as if I was letting myself down into the water. And I realized, you know, I, I had to ask myself, what's my own elemental water in my life? You know? What is it in your life? What is it in mine? Whereby, simply by making contact with that belonging, simply by being in the presence of that work, I take on grace and, and a sense you know, of timelessness. And you can go through your whole life making an inventory like that. You can say, okay, I have work that I love, and just doing that work gives me grace and presence. But being a human being, I can do that work in a way in which it will kill me, you know? So not only what is the work that I love, but what way do I love to work? My way of working is different from every other creature in this world. You know? And then you can say, who are the people I love to work around? Just by being in their presence, I take on that sense. You know? And you can build an inventory of belonging in your own life around what, what your own motivations are, sense of yourself. I'll just finish with this last piece, and it's... Uh, it's a great kind of meeting poem, conversation poem. It's uh, Derek Walcott, West Indian poet. Usually, usually his poems are full of the alliteration and language of the West Indies, names of schooners and headlands and reefs. And they're long poems. But in the middle of his collected poems, you come across this one pager. And it's just as if he said, the hell with it, this is what it's really about. You know? It's just there. And it's called Love After Love. And he says, um, he says, you know, the day will come. The day will come when with elation you will greet yourself arriving at your own door, in your own mirror. The day will come when with elation you will greet yourself arriving at your own door, in your own mirror, and each will smile at the other's welcome. Each will smile at the other's welcome, saying, sit here, eat, you will love again the stranger who was yourself. Give wine, give bread, give back your heart, 
to itself, to the stranger who has loved you all your life, whom you ignored for another, who knows you by heart. Take down the love letters from the bookshelf, the photographs, the desperate notes. Peel your own image from the mirror. Sit, feast on your life. The day will come when with elation you will greet yourself arriving at your own door, in your own mirror, and each will smile at the other's welcome, saying, Sit here, eat. You will love again. 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 You will love again the stranger who was yourself. Give wine. Give bread. Give back your heart to itself, to the stranger who has loved you all your life, whom you ignored for another, who knows you by heart. Take down the love letters from the bookshelf photographs, the desperate notes, peel your own image from the mirror, sit, feast on your life.